All right, uh, we are finally going to study math from this video. So I'm not going to talk about economics for a while. Uh, instead, restrict attention to math. All right, so our first focus is on linear equations. Uh, so we're gonna spend about two weeks for studying how to deal with this linear equation. So here are two examples of a linear equation. Uh, the first equation, x plus 2y, is given by 3. And the second equation, we have 2x, 2x1 minus 3x2 equal to 8. And these are called linear uh, because their graphs are straight lines on the uh, uh, standard uh, coordinate system. All right. In general, if we have n variables, a uh, linear equation takes a form of this. Yeah, let me illustrate that in a uh, uh, in this note. So suppose we have n variables uh, from x1 to xn. Okay. And the conventional way of writing linear equation is we collect variable terms and put them on the left hand side of the equation, and we write the constant term on the right hand side. Okay, so we usually separate variable terms and constant term this way. And we need coefficients. So let me say a1 is coefficient of x1, and a2 is coefficient of x2, and a sub n is coefficient of uh, the last variable xn. Okay, and we add these terms all the way to uh, a sub n, xn. All right, this is the left-hand side of the linear equation. And on the right-hand side, we put a constant term, B. Okay, so this is general form of a linear equation when it has n variables. Uh, and it has two properties. The first property is each term has at most one variable. Okay, so for example, uh, x1 times x2 minus x3 is uh, negative 2. This is a nonlinear equation because in the first term, uh, we have multiplication. We have two variables and they are multiplied together. Okay, so this is nonlinear. And the second property of linear equation is uh, the exponent of all variables is set by 1. Okay, so it's fixed by 1. So x1's power and x2's power, the all variable's power is fixed by 1. Okay, so for example, x squared, 2x squared minus y plus z is 0. Okay, this is nonlinear equation because the variable x's power is given by 2. Okay, so Linear equation is indeed a special case of general functions. So it's quite narrow class of, you know, within functions class, but it is a, a little bit more general than you had expected. Okay? So for instance, although this equation is nonlinear, we can easily translate into linear equation by substitution, by way of substitution. So let me relabel x squared by x prime. Okay, then with this new variable, I can rewrite the equation into uh, 2x prime minus y plus z equal to zero. Now it becomes linear. Okay, so the class of linear equations is a little bit more broader, or uh, that is a little bit more broad than your expectation. So we're going to study how to deal with this. All right. Okay. And then it had the linear equation has uh, three basic components. The first component is uh, the you know, coefficients. So that is denoted by A. And the constant B, the number on the right hand side, and the variable axis. All right. All right. And then going back, so now going to the next slide, suppose we have system of M linear equations. Uh, with n variables. All right, now how to duplicate linear equations? 
So here we have a, uh, let me call this first occasion. And in order to highlight this is the first occasion of the system, uh, let me put one more, uh, one more subscript. So this is a a sub one one. This is a sub one two. This is a sub one m. This is b sub one. Okay. So the first subscript uh, stands for uh, stands for uh, this is the first decation. See the ordinal number of the equation. Okay, and the second subscript stands for the uh, ordinal number of the variable. So a sub one two uh, indicates the uh, coefficient of the second variable x two in the first equation. Okay, now with these double subscripts, uh, we can duplicate the second equation. So a sub two one x one plus a sub 2, 2, x2, and all the way to a sub 2, m, x, n. Now, the constant term becomes b sub 2, okay? And similarly, the third equation can be made, a sub 3, 1, x1, a sub 3, 2, x2, and all the way to a sub 3, m, x, n. Now, that is equal to b sub 3. All right, and suppose we have m linear equations, okay? So the first equation, second, and the last mth equation is given by here, given by this, all right? So here, uh, the double subscripted parameter symbol a sub ij uh, represents the coefficient in the ith equation and attached to the jth variable, right? So for example, a sub 2, 2 uh, indicates the coefficient of x2, the second variable, uh, that is represented by the second subs subscript and in the second equation. Okay, that is given by the first subscript. All right, and the three uh, basic components. So we have the set of coefficients a sub ij's and the set of variables x's and the set of constant terms b's, all right? And we first study how to simplify the representation of the previous linear system with the so-called matrices, okay? So in mathematics, a matrix is defined as a rectangular array of numbers, symbols, or letters, okay? So if you guys ever used Microsoft Excel, you've made several matrices before. Okay, so let me open the uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, Chrome, and go into Google's uh, Google Excel sheet. All right. Right, then we have a uh, our Excel sheet here. And let me just investigate three people's annual salaries. So we have three people, Tom, Robert, and Jane. Mm -hmm. And Tom's annual salary is given by 50,000, Robert's 80,000, Jane, she earns the most, say 100,000, okay? And now we come up with one matrix. So that is the rectangular array of numbers and letters, actually people's name, okay? And they, uh, we have two terminologies used in matrix algebra, rows and columns. So row indicates the uh, group of numbers on the same horizontal line, okay? So the first row is Tom and 50,000. Second row, Robert and 80,000. And the third row, Jane and 100,000. And column is the group of numbers or uh, letters or symbols uh, vertically stacked, okay? So column A shows a, a people's names and column B shows uh, their salaries, okay? So this is rows and this is columns. And that's the matrix.
All right. So here, matrix A collects the, uh, all the coefficients in the linear system, linear equation system. So in the first row, we collect coefficients in the first equation. In the second row, uh, coefficients in the second equation, and so on. And column-wise, uh, in the first column, we collect the coefficients of x1 in m uh, equations. In the second column, the coefficient of the second variable, and so on. Okay? And the size of a matrix is measured by the number of rows and columns that it contains. Okay, so the matrix A has M rows and N columns. Okay, and this matrix is called an M by N matrix. Okay, so we first write uh, the number of rows and the number of columns. Okay, and this M by N is called a dimension of the matrix. Okay, so this is the dimension. Dimension of the matrix. All right, so uh, for matrix X, we collect a, uh, a set of variables because we have N variables. So the uh, dimension of this matrix is going to be uh, n by 1. There, there are n rows and just one column. And similarly for constant matrix B, now we collect all constants, the numbers on the right hand side of the equations. So we have m equations, so the dimension of this co uh, constant matrix is going to be m by 1. Okay, so m rows and one column. And the matrix, uh, this matrix A, so the array of coefficients has a special name. It is called the coefficient matrix of the system. And if we combine A and the constant matrix B, all right, that is called the augmented matrix of the linear system. All right, and that is denoted A sub hat. Right. For better understanding, let me show you one specific example. Uh, so we have uh, three occasions, a system of three occasions with three variables, uh, x1, x2, and x3. Okay? And find this coefficient matrix A and augmented matrix A hat. That's pretty easy. So for coefficient matrix A, so now we have three occasions and three variables. So the coefficient matrix has dimension of 3 by 3. Okay? So we usually write the uh, demand, dimension information underneath the matrix letter like this. Okay? So A is 3 by 3 matrix. And in the first row, in the first row, we write down the coefficients in the first equation. So 6, 3, 1. And in the second row, we, we write a uh, coefficients in the second equation. So 1, 4, negative 2. In the third row, 4, uh, negative 1, 5. Okay. And the uh, constant matrix B is going to be 3 by 1 matrix. So 22, 12, 10. Okay. Uh, the vertical array of are constants on the right hand side of the uh, linear system. So this is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. And if we combine these two, so adding one more column to matrix A, we obtain augmented matrix. So A hat is uh, 6, 3, 1, 1, 4, negative 2, and 5. And we add one more column, 12, uh, 22, 12, 10. So this is augmented matrix. All right, pretty easy. So this augmented matrix is going to be used in the next week when we solve uh, this equation using uh, some elimination method. All right. 
And then here are some other terminologies used in uh, matrix algebra. So first, uh, we can write the matrix uh, two ways. So the first way is this. We uh, write down all entries. By the way, each element of matrix is called entry or component. So A sub T2 is a one entry of the matrix A in the second row and in the second column, okay, or component, all right? So we can write the matrix in this way. So that is quite useful if a, a matrix A has a, a finite number of, some specific number of rows and specific number of columns. Say three by two matrix, we can write a, a uh, we can express matrix A uh, with this bracket expression. But if A has arbitrary number of rows and arbitrary number of columns like this, we can usually simplify the notation into this, okay? So we put A sub IJ uh, in the bracket, okay? So if we write A as A sub IJ with brackets, all right? And I is some number between 1 and M, so the number of rows, and J is some number between uh, 1 and N, N is the number of columns, all right? And this is another way to write a matrix in a uh, compact form. Okay, so let's say A is an M by N matrix, and if the number of rows equal to number of columns, we say that uh, A is scare matrix, because uh, then in such a case, matrix A has the same width or same length and same height, so it's gonna be scare. Okay, so we call that scare matrix. And if all entries are given by zero, then matrix A is called zero matrix. And if N is equal to one, then we are going to have this, just we have only one column for matrix A, then this matrix is called column vector. So its dimension is going to be M by one. And so whenever you know, matrix A has just one column, we call that column vector. If matrix A has only row vector, one row vector, then it's called a row vector. And if M and N are equal to one, then A reduces into a single component, and that is called a scalar, all right? It's just some terminologies used in matrix algebra, okay? And M by N matrix can be put as the array of M row vectors or N, log, or N column vectors, okay? To illustrate this idea, let me show you one specific example here. So here, a is, matrix A is given by two by three matrix, okay? So it has a two rows and three columns, all right? So we can, this, we can decompose this matrix into uh, two rows vector, two row vectors. So row vector is denoted by A sub I, and the jth column vector denoted by a superscript J, all right? Because matrix A has two rows and three columns. So the first row vector of matrix A, A sub one, is one, one, minus two. And the second row vector, A sub two, is negative one, four, negative five, all right? And the first column vector of matrix A, a superscript one is one and minus one, right? The first column vector. And the second column vector, A super two, one and four. And the third column vector, uh, A superscript three, negative two and negative five, all right? Uh, so the total matrix A is a, a combination of A, A sub one and A sub two. So matrix A can be thought of as the array of row vectors or the array of column vectors. 
All right, so I mean, matrix A can be written as A sub one and A sub two. Okay, we do this A sub one and A sub two. That's the array of row vectors, or we can rewrite this A as the array of column vectors, A super one, A super two, A super three. Okay, this is A super one, this is A super two, this is A, th a super script three. All right, so we decompose matrix uh, horizontally, so with the low vectors, or vertically uh, with the column vectors. And one thing you have to notice is, all right, so here we have a, a first row vector, 1, 1, negative 2 of matrix A. All right, and this matrix has the same information as this vector, okay? Vector with three elements, that is a, another name of, uh, we discussed ordered pair in the previous week, and this is ordered triple in the sense that it has a three elements, okay? Unlike the matrix, uh, we uh, put comma between elements when we express vector, okay? But these two expressions uh, deliver the same information to us, okay? So that they, they are actually equivalent. That is why we call this a a sub one row vector. Okay, that is one vector, and so is the column vector. Okay, a super one. This is also a vector. Okay, one comma minus one. This is the same as uh, one comma minus one. All right, so. Every column or row vector uh, can be written as of uh, uh, can be written in a vector form like this. And finally, if we have another matrix B, uh, so that each entry is written by written as B sub i j, then we say two matrices are uh, the same if every entry is the same. Okay, so if this is A and let me say matrix B is 1, minus 2, 1, and minus 1, minus 5, 4, okay? So I just changed the, I just switched a, a second column vector with a, thalum, uh, with a third column vector for matrix B, right? So although matrix A and B have the same entry, but the, uh, uh, a sub 1, 2, so the entry in the first row and in the second column, that is 1, is not the same as B sub 1, 2, that is negative 2, so this is not a same matrix. Okay, so for, for equivalence, uh, for, two matrices, uh, for two matrices be to be equal to each other, every entry must be the same. All right. This is why we call that a ordered triple. Okay, so all the matters. And uh, we're gonna study some basic operations for matrices. So let me start with uh, how to add two matrices. Okay, and the addition of matrices can be only defined when two matrices have the same dimension. Okay, and if this condition is met, we say that two matrices are conformable for addition. So in the textbook, there is some terminology, conformability. I never heard about that, but a, uh, uh, this is nothing but, uh, so com conformability for addition means uh, two matrices have the same, con uh, same dimension, okay? Only, uh, only this is true, only when this is true, uh, we can add two matrices. And the addition of two matrices is defined as follows. Okay, so if we have A, matrix A, A sub IJ, and B, B sub IJ, and these two are uh, the dimension of these two matrices are the same, M by N, then we define addition of these two as a uh, addition of each entry. So the first are uh, in the first row and in the first column we have a sub 1, 1 plus b sub 1, 1. 
And in this our first row in, and in the second column, we have a sub 1, 2 plus a sub 1, 2, and so on. Okay, so this is just the addition component wise. Right, it's not that difficult. So let me do one example here. Uh, we have matrix A, uh, this is a 2 by 3 matrix, and B is also 2 by 3 matrix, so the dimension is the same, so we can add them together. So A plus B, uh, A plus B is, so the ver very first entry, A sub 1, 1 plus B sub 1, 1, so 1 plus 5. The second entry in the first row, R minus 1 plus 1. And the third entry, 0 minus 1. And in the second row, 2 plus 2, and 3 plus 1, and 4 minus 1. So it becomes 6, 0, minus 1, and 4, 4, 3. Okay, and this, this is the way to add uh, two matrices together, okay? Uh, it's pretty easy. And the second operation is scalar multiplication. So if we have C, a number, a constant, so this is not a matrix, that is just a number, say two or three or negative two, right? And we have matrix A. And how do we multiply these two? We multiply C by, you know, we, we multiply each component by C, okay? So the first entry, A sub 1, 1 becomes C times A sub 1, 1. And the second entry in the first row, a sub 1, 2 becomes c times a sub 1, 2, and so on. All right? So for example, uh, if we have this matrix A and uh, compute, if we compute 3 times A, then it's going to be 3 minus 3, 0, 6, 9, 12 in the second row. All right? So we multiply each entry by constant 3. All right, so when C is negative one, okay, then how, so this is the way to subtract two matrices, all right? So how do we define A minus B? A minus B can be thought of as uh, the addition of these two matrices, A and negative B, and negative B is scalar multiplication of matrix B by negative one, all right? So the each entry becomes difference uh, difference between so the each entry of a minus b is gonna be uh, their difference. So a sub one one minus b sub one one, the very first entry in the first row, and the second entry in the first row is a sub one two minus b sub one two, and so on. Okay. So that is a, a subtraction component wise. All right. So we have one more example here. Uh, let me do just this, a minus 2b, all right? So we have matrix A, 2 by 3 matrix, and B also 2 by 3 matrix. So addition, subtraction are well defined, all right? So let me first compute negative 2b. So this is a scalar multiplication. Uh, so we multiply each entry of B by negative 2. So negative 1 becomes 2, 5 becomes negative 10, negative 2 becomes 4, and in the second row, negative 4, negative 4, and 2. Okay, then we just add matrix A to this, right? That's going to be A minus 2B. So A minus 2B is uh, 1 plus 2, so 3. And 2 minus 10, 8, negative 8. 3 plus 4, 7. In the second row, negative 1 minus 4, negative 5. And 0 minus 4, negative 4. And 2 plus 2, 4. All right? So that's going to be, so this is the way to compute some, you know, some, uh, some simple algebraic operations, addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplications. Okay, hopefully this is clear. And matrix addition, so by definition, okay, 
addition, addition, addition of two matrices is defined as the addition of each entry, all right? And we can change the order. A sub 1, 1 plus B sub 1, 1 is clearly the same as B sub 1, 1 plus A sub 1, 1. If we reverse, even if we reverse the order, we end up with the same result. That means for this matrix operation, addition, addition, uh, the commutative low holds. So A plus B is the same as B plus A. And also associated low holds, right? So even if we take A plus B first, or you know, B plus C first, uh, we have the same outcome, same matrix, right? And because a subtraction is uh, is an addition of A negative B, so we don't need a separate discussion for subtraction. So commutative and associative conditions are met, uh, so the order does not matter even for subtraction. Okay. And let me talk about just one more uh, one more operation for matrix that is a transpose. All right. So for trans, tra transpose, uh, suppose we have n by n matrix A, and its transpose B are uh, written by B equal to A super T. So here T stands for transpose. So A is transpose. So that is defined as n by m matrix. So if the original matrix is n by n, its transpose B becomes n by m matrix, okay? And its ijth entry, B sub ij, is the same as A sub ji, all right? So that is also transpose of a matrix is a, a matrix uh, whose entry is just a, a reflection over the diagonal. Diagonal, okay? So suppose we have a matrix A, or you know, if this is a, so suppose A is a two by two, you know, matrix, one and negative one, two and two, all right? And A's transpose is, is we just left a, a, a entries on the diagonal, so one and two, okay? And then we just change the location uh, of the entries of the diagonal, all right? So two is now here, and the negative one is right here, okay? So that's the transpose. So that is to flip the matrix uh, over this diagonal, all right? That's the transpose, all right? So the uh, taking the transpose uh, amounts to changing lows into columns and vice versa. All right. So the uh, uh, the first column vector of matrix A becomes a first row vector in the transpose, and the first row vector of matrix A one and minus one becomes the first column vector of the transpose. All right. Okay, so this way we can find the transpose of matrix C. Now that is given by two by three matrix. So C's transpose, C super T, is gonna be two by three matrix, oh, sorry, three by two matrix, okay? So the first column vector becomes the first row vector of the transpose. So two comma one, and the second column, uh, second column vector becomes a second row vector, one, three. And the last column vector becomes the last row vector, zero and five. Okay, so the transpose of C becomes a three by two matrix. All right. And the last, po last point I would like to mention is, if A is a column vector, so if A is, uh, one, three, two, okay? So the dimension is uh, three by one matrix. There's just a one column, so this is a column vector. And if we take the transpose on this, then we are gonna get a low vector, right? Because in transpose, this column vector becomes a low vector. So A super T 
is going to be 3 by 1 or 1 by 3 matrix. So 1, 3, 2. All right? And vice versa. If we have a row vector that is transposed, becomes a column vector. All right? Now that is the, uh, another operation of a matrix. All right? So in the next slide, we are going to study how to multiply two matrices. And this is the end of the third video. Hope you enjoy that and see you guys in the next.